Hello people, it's your boy Tech Mayor again. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Official Tech Mayor, where I'll be talking about IT stuff, Linux system administrations, DevOps and cloud computing technology. In this series, I'm gonna be talking about the installation of a Linux server, then to a six specifically. You know, as you all know, Linux is an open source operating system. Linux has so many distributions, but you can choose your choice of distro based on your project requirements. In this tutorial, I will show you how to install Send to a 6 on VirtualBox on Windows. For this, you will need to have VirtualBox installed and download the Send to a 6 ISO file from the official servers. VirtualBox is a virtualization software that allows users to easily run multiple guest operating systems on a single host. For example, you have, you have a Windows-based computer and you need to install Linux OS. A VirtualBox will enable you to achieve this, but I'm gonna talk more on that virtualization technology in one of my next videos. If you do not have VirtualBox installed on your Windows or Mac, I am going to explain the process of installing VirtualBox on your Windows machine or Mac OS. Just do a quick Google search, open up your web browser, type in VirtualBox download. Then go to, go to download. It takes you to this page. For Windows users, use Windows host. And for Mac users, use OS X hosts. I'm not gonna install VirtualBox right now because I already have it installed on my laptop. Now to install it, we must first download the send to a six, which comes in the form of an ISO file, which means virtual CD. It can be downloaded from multiple locations. Check the link in the comment section and see a list of mirrors around the world. Choose the one that is geographically near you. I already have it downloaded here and stored in a separate folder. I'm, I am going to assume that you have VirtualBox downloaded already. VirtualBox is a popular virtualization platform. And besides that, it's free. So let's open VirtualBox and go to the new virtual machine and select these options. So click on new. Now you can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call my, my first VM. The type must be Linux and since there's no options for send to us, you can use Red Hat 32 or 64 bit, depending on your system. CentOS is also a clone of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Click next, and you are taken to a screen where you must decide how much memory best your server will take. The default is one gigabyte you can specify the size required by your virtual machine. Now I will choose create a virtual hard disk. Next, we can leave the virtual disk type as VDI. Other options are useful if you're working with other virtualization software. Next is to choose whether to use a fixed size or dynamically allocated expanding disk space. The first choice takes as much disk space as we define virtual disk space. The second option takes only a small amount of disk space and it grows as data is added to virtual disks. The default option is dynamically allocated and it's a good choice, although it's a little bit slower. Click next and your virtual machine is created. Now it's to, next is to state the size of the virtual hard disk size. This is sometimes determined by the purpose at which we are creating a server. Also, we should put into consideration the total size of the host system hard disk. Because being a virtual server, it's getting all its resources from the host machine 
which is our laptop, desktop computer, or Mac OS. But for the purpose of this video, I am going to use N gigabyte. Then click on the create button. Now we have our first virtual machine. You will notice it's in the powered off state. Before we turn it on, we must do two things. Specify the ISO file type, which from which an operating system will be installed and specify the network type. So let's specify the ISO file by right clicking on the virtual machine, then choose settings and then storage. Click on the disk icon that's below controller IDE, which says empty. Then click on the disk icon, which is right of optical drive, and choose that will, and choose an ISO file that will serve as a virtual disk. Choose the essentials ISO that you do downloaded previously. Next is to configure the network. I'm using my Windows 10 laptop to run VirtualBox. It connects to the internet via a modem. By default, virtual machines use NAT, network address translation, which, is the, which uses the same IP address as my laptop, which may cause conflict during networking. I will choose bridge adapter networking, which will allow my virtual box send to us to have a separate address, IP address in the same subnet. I don't want to go too deep in networking, so please watch out for that in my next video. So then click OK. Now installation begins by selecting virtual machine and clicking start at the top or right clicking, clicking on start and then normal start. Soon you'll be prompted to do to choose what to do next. Now interrupt the process by pressing any key on your keyboard. Click inside the window and scroll to choose install and press the enter key. You may notice that your mouse pointer is captured inside the window. To get out, press the right control key to release your mouse pointer. Now, now you click on next to continue. You need to choose the installation language in the keyboard layout. Choose the appropriate options and proceed. Now choose basic storage device, the default. Virtual hard disk must be initialized. So you accept yes, discard any data. Next screen allows you to set your host name. If nothing is done here. It will give you a default host name. So I'm going to set my host name to techmayor.net. And what is host name? Host name is the nickname that is given to a computer, a device connected to a computer network. We'll learn more about this in Linux networking. We will change our time zone on the next screen. And we can do it either by clicking on a map to choose our location or clicking on the drop down list below to choose our location. And I'm going to choose my time zone, which is Chicago. The next step is to create a root password. It is advisable to select something that cannot be easily guessed, which includes an uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters because of the sensitivity of a root password. 
which is the most powerful user of a server and can do and undo anything. On the next screen, choose to use all space since we don't need any data or previous partition layouts. Now we have finished installing. Now everything is ready for the installation. You can still go back to review something or write changes to the disk and proceed with the installation. This installation will begin now, creating a file system and installing necessary packages. Based on your processor, disk space, and available memory, it will take a few minutes to complete all these tasks. At the end of the installation, you will get a message that the installation is finished. You must boot the virtual machine. Reboot the system by clicking close, then exiting out and clicking on power, choosing power off the machine. Next is to remove the installation medium so the server can boot on the virtual hard disk. Select the virtual machine, click on settings, then go to system, check optical, click on OK. Then start the virtual machine again. Wait for the server to run its course to get the server ready for final installation setup and licensing information. Now you click on forward. Then you leave it on the default here, which is yes, I agree to the license agreement, and click on forward again. Next is to create a regular non-administrative user, which is the best practice for security purposes because it is unethical to always log in with boost access to provide the information as required. Then click on forward when you're done. Now check the synchronized data and time over the network. Because this will set the NTP, which is network time protocol. And it is important to set it so as to set the and maintain the time on the server correctly. Now click on forward. Our server is ready to use, so just sign in with the credentials. And you're in your server's desktop environment. Now click on applications. Go to system tools and terminal. And to get your Linux terminal to start typing commands, such as ls-lpwd. I hope the time spent so far is worth it. And I trust that this process will help be helpful to new Linux users and Linux system administrators. Hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below, please.
like and share this video for more educative content about IT. See you in the next video. It's your boy, Tech Mayor. Thank you.